you know, I told you that I like, you know, Shaolin. I like, you know, this kind of, you know, idea of, you know, this kind of more spiritual learning. And, you know, they do say, like, if you want to be the best, you have to learn from the best. And, you know, so when we ask our guests to come here, you know, we do our kind of background check first and, and we make sure they are the best. So, you know, the people you're going to definitely see tonight, they are the best. And um, we have two, you know, like, a, you know, color scientists, really. You know, but I kind of, it's very hard to kind of define, you know, what exactly they do. You know, this kind of, you know, like one of them has got this long title, one of them has a short title. You know, like whatever, you know, their employees decide to call them, we know what they do. We know that they are actually people who are directly responsible for the image quality. We're, they are the people who fix the problems. They are actually people who make it possible for the creatives to work and, you know, for the technical part to actually function. So very, very important chain that very often doesn't really get enough recognition. You know, like people kind of, you know, you know recognize, you know, all the kind of cinematographers and actors and directors were about, I always kind of feel sorry for colorists that, that they don't really get more industry recognition and I hope this is going to change. Maybe this group starts initiation that we actually really start like a little bit coming up in the ranks and you know start getting more recognized for the input and, and you know really contribution we do to every production we work on. So at least amongst us here, in this room, you know, I hope you're going to help me to give, you know, a, a, a amount of contribution and amount of recognition that these people deserve um, because they have really, like, especially when I'm talking about Josh Pines, our second guest tonight, you know, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing if there hadn't been him, you know, doing stuff that he did and created for the past, you know, 30 years or something that he was in the industry, probably longer. I don't want to embarrass him for the amount of years that he was working in this industry. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so first of all, I want to thank Abel Sine for hosting us. So can we have a round of applause for Abel Sine, please? <laughs> They are amazing, and you know what? You know there is Abel Sine, and there is people who work for Abel Sine who actually give their best. You know, so yeah, you know. So you see, there is like a, our uh, social media specialists. You know, here am. And then, you know, we have Ian on the camera, you know, who does all of the setups and everything. And there's Christy. She's like a responsible for the beer and wine and they're making everything happen. <laughs> <laughs> and then also there is Ivana from Color Training, who is basically the one that keeps us in line. You know, like, what happened with emails? Did you do this? What happened there? And it actually, to be honest, the production wouldn't really happen if there wouldn't be her in, her in place. So thank you, Ivana, for organizing these events. And, um, and, you know, and thank you all of you to come, you know, and because if you wouldn't be coming, we wouldn't be doing it. So thank you for being here tonight. But give yourself a round of applause as well. I know you could be doing anything tonight, you know, especially folks who came here from SEMTI, you know? They were like busy for days on a conference and still with the last, you know, atom of energy, they decided to get their ass over here, have some beer, hopefully, and enjoy a really good evening. You know, guys, in comparison to SEMTI, we're going to be 10 times more fun and 10 times more enjoyable. So don't worry, it's going to be worthwhile, okay? All right, so without further ado, I would like to invite on the stage our very first guest, okay? And um, he's a person that, you know, I discovered through Bob Richardson. And the basically interesting, you know, like, you know, it was one of those kind of random conversations. And, um, and you know, it turns out that, you know, when a cinematographer like him, you know, is, is, is you know, looking, you know, how to get his movie through the DI, he certainly has a, has a colorist, you know, he likes to work with, that's for sure. But it turns out he also has a color scientist that he trusts with the whole process. That's somebody who's going to actually keep things in line. Because you know, especially when projects gets bigger, you have more companies involved, there has to be someone you trust in your team that's actually gonna keep everything in line and do this. So, um, 
I, uh, w w where is my first guest? Oh, very good. Please, can, I, can we just please um, welcome on the stage and have a big round of applause for Matt? <laughs> Matthew? <laughs> Matthew, I want you to introduce yourself so you can grab uh, maybe uh, this microphone and I want you to like, uh, you know, we're gonna, gonna maybe sit down with us, have a little beer. This is like how we like to do it at Colorist Meetups. You know, they say, it's the people who do the, the beer meeting that told me you have to invite us as well. If you, if you serve beer, we have to come. So I hope their HPA. HPA is here as well. Okay, very good. So we're making a point. So, uh, Matt, I want to like now like start a little bit. Like, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit to the audience? Because I think it's better to do it that way and tell us a little bit about what is it exactly that you do. Um, so, specifically in for this endeavor, you could say, uh, my name is Matt Tomlinson, Matthew Tomlinson on, on IMDb. Um, I am a color scientist for Harbor at the moment, and I was the color scientist for. Uh, once upon a time in Hollywood. Um, I've been doing this for 20 plus years, uh, multiple places. I'm currently at Harbor previously. I was at uh, Shed previously before that, E-Film. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, before that, I was in the VFX world. I worked at uh, Tippett Studio up north. And uh, you know, before that, like old school boss film for like, Air Force One and <laughs> multiplicity for those who saw that. So, <laughs> Matt, there was always this question, you know, like that people ask us, like you know, like every time we have a color science, they say, "Hey, and how do you learn color science?" Because even if you're to Google color science, you know, there is maybe one course on, on RTI that you can find. But you know, how did you become? How I okay, this is actually kind of fun, um, in that I went to Loyola Marymount University. And I came from Denver, Colorado, wanted to go to film school, realized that I, my last name is not Spielberg, and I know no one. <laughs> and I had basically four years to try to figure out how I was going to get a job in the industry. And that's, that's basically how I saw college. I, I went into film school, and I was like, my job in, in college is actually to get a job. <laughs> and, um, and to do so, what I did is I... The moment I walked on campus, I started interning. And I interned at probably about 22 different places uh, throughout college. Um, and the place that I, in my senior year, I, I internshiped at, uh, at Boss Film in their imaging science department. And I wanted to be a compositor at that point because my, my intent at that, you know, during my whole thought process of what I wanted to do was I wanted to make Saturday morning cartoons. I wanted to make, I, I wanted to draw. And I, I the compositing, I, and the VFX world didn't have an internship in that realm, but this place did have an imaging science. And I was like, okay, I don't know what that means, but they'll <laughs> let me do it. And this was 1995. And it was right during the transition out of um, analog to digital where people were actually scanning VFX and put, you know, putting them back out to film and just cutting the negative back into the actual film. And I walked in day one and I was like, I have found my calling. This is exactly what I want to do. I have found the future and whatever I need to do to be part of this, I will do it. And what I did was I interned there for a month and a half and uh, I left. And the guy who supervised me, I called him every two weeks for a year. <laughs> and and I would get his voicemail and he, I would you know I would never at a point he wouldn't even answer the phone I would just be like hey remember me if anything comes up I want to be in let me know and I I interviewed for a job there three times and I got the job the like the, the third time I got the job <laughs> and I just I dove in and I never looked back you see so this is the lesson for all of you, like, you know, like, especially if some students are here, you know, you, you need to, you need to, like, show commitment, really, like, if you want to get in, especially now, it's harder, you know? Oh, it's way harder. Like, mm. I, 
the no. path that I took no longer exists. Probably, yeah. It's hard. Yeah, you need to like really pester in to get in. So, so okay, so let's now do a fast forward. So you basically gained a lot of experience through effects. You worked at E-Film, which was always at the cutting edge. Totally. You know? E-Film. <laughs> no, I, in, in all seriousness, you know, like I, I, I was under the direct tutelage of Bill Feitner for a number of years. Oh and my I was his God. Right, hand, right hand man for a, a solid five years. And then uh, um, after Bill exited eFilm, I, I took, I was the director of imaging science at that point for a, a couple of years after that, before I moved on after that. So, you know, like being under Bill's tutelage was paramount in that respect. He is amazing, isn't he? The Absolutely. simplicity. I love, I love the simplicity of his work. Like he definitely knows yeah, there, how not to complicate. There, there are certain you know phrases that I've always taken with me where like you know when everything works, it's a straight line. <laughs> you know, it's when things get squirrely. That's when you have to like. That's when you have problems. If if all everything's lined up, it's just a straight line. Yeah, I love this is thing. Uh, Bill just makes things like very, very as you say, straight line. You know. That's, so that was your true mentor who basically got you to kind of that kind of level. To, to bring it to that next level. Next level. Yeah. Very, very good. And then there was Shed, isn't it? With Ivan, it, isn't it? Ivan, uh, was, uh, Ivan was kind of the colorist at Shed to begin with. Yeah, yeah, he was the colorist at Shed, which, you know, Shed and Harbor merged. Basically, Shed became Harbor. Um, yeah, and, and Yvonne was the main colors there. Absolutely. But wait, you were, we must have worked with him at eFilm before. I did, absolutely. And how, how do you two guys like each other? How do you get along? Oh, we get along great. Yeah? I mean, like, no, it's, uh, you know, he's, he's fantastic. Um, you know, we have a, a, an amazingly collaborative experience, um, you know, where, you know, it, I've always taken the, the, the concept that if I'm a colorist, if I was a colorist, my color scientist would be my best friend. I would, you know, because I'm going to reach out to them. Because if I'm a colorist, you, there's so many tools available to do so many uh, amazing things. But time is of the essence. And if my color scientist or, you know, color scientist slash imaging scientist, I should say, you know, has the ability to create a transform or a LUTs or something like that, something that, you know, as a colorist, I might be able to do, but it might take me 20 minutes. If I can just apply something, then I can just move, and and you know that's where with Yvonne we re, we've really in, um, embraced this concept of, you know, basically uh, there there was always this thought of like LUTs are just looks, but they are also very much tools that you know we're not just mapping from color space to color space. We're also just using them as as thematic and and um, creative devices, and you can put them in. You know, and, and and we're no longer living in a day and age where you have to to apply them completely. You can. You can apply one a little bit and another thing a little bit more and create uh, imagery that has never really been seen before, but man, does it look cool. Uh, so, you know, like, and it's always the, the cool, you know, <laughs> get, I want blue shadows and warm highlights. All right, cool. Well, let's, let's blend that in. And, you know, I, I want, you know, and then we get to, we've got, you know, we, we have this thing where we, we call them modifier LUTs. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll have the base LUT and we'll have modifier LUTs. And the modifier LUTs, you know, you, you, you know, you can put them in and you can, we built them, I built them in such a way that you can stack a lot of them. So like, you know, if, if you, if it's like a, it's like a restaurant menu, if you will, you know, like I want, I want this and this and this and this and this, and I'm going to put them all in, but I don't have to apply them 100% of each one. I can salt a taste if you want per shot. And then it really, you could own then, then the LUT itself, becomes part of the color grade mm. and so you can put you know you can put them in different places there's all you know of course there's the traditional input LUT, the traditional output LUT. you know in the aces term idt odt you know you could what you could actually consider is that we're just we're, we've really embraced the concept of lmts and just really just gone for it and um and so we're uh that's a lot of how Yvonne and I will, will work together where he will say, I really, Matt, I really want this thing and I want to look like, I want to look like this movie, but a little bit more like this movie and I want it to be this and that. You have to do this in French accent. Yeah, I, I, I don't speak French at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, and, and that's, that's, and I'll say, okay, cool, I think I've got it. And I'll walk away and I'll come back in like an hour or two uh -huh. and be like, try that. And, and he'll give me more notes and we'll, you know, iterate until he's like, I, I dig this, I, I, I like this. 
So, so you see, this is exactly what I wanted to hear because you know, behind I think every good colorist, you know, there must be a, a, a scientist, you I know, that that is really gonna actually do that heavy lifting, you know. Well, I mean, like, in, in, and my perspective is, is like I said, like if I was like a color scientist from a colorist, I, I would that that would be my best friend. Like, sometimes there's this thought process that a color scientist is a threat to a colorist, and that is so like so not true at all like if anything all i want to do is please the colorist you know like if, if a colorist looks at me and goes like i really like that that's like the greatest high of all time for me <laughs> and i'm like yeah yeah i made someone happy and you know and and and, and then we can, and and we can just grow from there and you know if i can if i can work on shows where people are like that looked really cool you know like i built maybe i build a look or a LUT or a transform or whatever you want to call it that's included on this show. Well, you know that's part of my soul, <laughs> that's in there as well. So you know, I you know, it's, it's your movie as a colorist, but it's my movie too. <laughs> so you know, I take I take pride in these things, and and I want, I want us to all you know, let's let's all go down this journey together. Is yeah. kind of where it is. And you know, like I have to say, like working with Iman must be interesting. You know, he is a character. You know, he's a definite, and he has a different approach to grading than anyone else I've seen. You know, like honestly, the way how he splits his channels and everything is just like a wow, you know, like wait, 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 you know, like, you know. And I know DPs that graded with him that walked out of the session and said, I didn't understand a thing he was doing. You know, it looked good, but I couldn't say anything because the guy was just having completely like stuff that we didn't quite get. Well, I mean, like you gotta understand with Yvonne, like his roots are film. He was a lab timer for 20 years. And he'll tell you that you know, straight out. So, you know, that's a lot of times how his brain works. He's thinking things of like, you know, if I were timing a negative onto print, this is how I would attack it. Mm -hmm. with, with digital, um, we, uh, we get the ability to say, okay, this is how we would attack it on film, but on digital, we can, we can actually attack it from a different perspective. And, and I can help in that respect because I can help say to him, okay, I know you're used to seeing things a certain way, but in this camera, if we go from this route, mm -hmm. it, it can, you, can, you might get a slightly different result, and maybe that's not a bad thing. And, and the beautiful thing about it is like, we'll, we'll, you know, we can play. You know, to really, where I am at, it's all about setting up an environment where we will, you know, Yvonne and I and and Elodie, who's right there, will uh, will will. Elodie, who's Elodie? Sorry. Right there, she's a colorist at Harbor as well. Yeah. Once upon a time in, in Hollywood, I mean, she was in the heart of it, absolutely. Well, well, you know, and has done a ton <laughs> of her own stuff. You know, there's a certain show on coming up on Netflix very soon that you should check out, and she was like, boom, all about it. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was, you know, these like we get in there and it's let's explore, you know, it's, it's if we can set up an environment where like, it, you know, the, that cliche, it's OK to fail, you know, let's let's get in there. And if it breaks, that's OK, because we learn something. We you know, I, I like to often say, like, that's good. We exposed a hole. Now we can fill the hole. <laughs> and and we, we can wrong. move on. Yeah, very good. <laughs> you know, that's great environment to work in. Probably, like you know, I have to say, you know, this is this is so. You know, I, I when I, s I I haven't, you know, I don't know if they changed a lot, but when Shed was Shed, I was there, and you know, I really felt like this is the ultimate boutique kind of, you know, like a, you know, environment where you actually really have everything you would expect from a big facility, but in a smaller package. Well, that's, that was kind of the hope. That was kind of the hope and dream because, you know, like it, it's, uh, I, I, I learned this really very much at eFilm and it ex expressed this beyond my, my years there where like, you know, if uh, I will use you as an example, <clears throat> this is, you're making a movie. It is your independent movie. You've put your heart and your soul and possibly your entire life savings into that movie. And a DI facility, in my perspective, is not just a, a place to make a movie. It's a hospital. And you're my patient, and I'm your doctor. And I swear to God, you're going to be OK. And, and I'm going to walk you through 
everything that we're doing here because I think it's important that you know, like, especially you know, uh, there's 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 sometimes a a, a concept of like, especially with what I do, like, sm it's oh, it's smoke and mirrors, whatever. You know, like I'm a, no, I'm a huge fan of like, no, this is what I'm doing. This is why we're doing it. This and this is how we're doing it. And if you don't like that, let's talk about that. Like, if you prefer a different process. Cool. I can bend. I am water. I can flow. So, and we can we can make it happen. But at the same time, if you're coming at me and I, I'm going to say, and it's not making sense, I'm okay. Cool. Let's go to a whiteboard, and let's map this out. Let's look at this with pictures, and uh, and and see how it is. Good to see you. Um, the uh, and 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 kind of go on from there. So, and that's that's where. That's where I like. That's where I, you know, my the, fun. The That's fun. my playground. Very good. And now I think you just had probably the most fun by working on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I mean, I mean, that must have been like I don't know. Does it feel to you? But if if I had been you, I would feel like it was my lifetime achievement. Like you know, like honestly, like you know, I I've seen it on 35 millimeter print, and I've seen a digital projection as well of that movie. And um, I have to say, film never looked better. You know, like, you know, there is, there is lots of, you know, when I came in, like, film was, was at its height, but it had a lot of problems. And, you know, we knew about the problems. And the reason why we all love digital, because it just solved many of those problems. Now, there is this kind some of... Some might argue that. Some might, yeah, I know. I know, I get it. You know, don't get me wrong. You know, some might argue. But, you know, but, 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 film has got its magic. And, but... The, 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 to hit it into the into the like a right sweet spot where it's film without those problems that we had like you know with all the kind of you know stuff that's happening around the medium and they you know to make it look the way that once upon a time in Hollywood looks it was just amazing and I think I I, I could not resist the temptation to find out exactly how you did it. So please, you know, can you let us in and can you tell us exactly how it was done? <laughs> Don't leave anything out. So let's start. So what was the stock? What was the stock? Yeah. Hell if I know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't what was that? Was it Kodak? Yeah, was it oh, yeah, it was, it was Kodak. I mean, I, I don't. Huh? What? Thank you. 5218. Um, okay. So that the stock was not my concern. Okay. My so concern was this so this movie in a traditional workflow of today was backwards. <laughs> and and it was it was it was a throwback. I mean like it the whole idea really was we're, it wasn't just making a movie based in a time period. It was making the movie as if it were made in that time period. And, and, but a, some of the, like, but also there's, there's realities of how workflows work in today. Uh, there's not all of the um, infrastructure that uh, existed 30 years ago doesn't all exist. So you, em you, embrace, you embrace imperfection. That's really what it is, and and so, what it, what it started with is Bob came in and we did a ton of tests, and you know he the first thing that was like super amazing about this movie is there's not one digital piece of footage in that movie at all. Everything is film, you know from the beginning to the end, uh, all the archival stuff is scanned IPs or INs or something. Um, and uh, all, the, all the footage is, is just uh, actual film. It's, there's no like, we snuck in a digital camera in here, none of that. Uh, uh, Quentin was, it was, a, it was a mandate, basically. <laughs> so like, like, you know, he, and, and this is where, this was my eye-opening moment. Where like at first what it was like okay we did tests okay Bob's happy we're making a look it's all good 
you know, there's the black and white stuff. There's the 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 you know, there's there's movies within this movie. There, you know, there's like there's a number of different looks. So we had to like work on this. What does this mean? What is how does it work? And and you know, the the VFX that came in. There was very few VFX shots, but they were all old school, and they were all done like magnificently. And but it how do you mean old school? They were done like optically, or well, no? uh, there was like some like there was okay like the. Uh, the the great example is that um, the we, we called it the 14 fist it's the 14 fist sequence where uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character is on a um, a balcony and he flamethrowers all the Germans you know how about some sauerkraut yeah. and um, <laughs> and that was done like that was shot by Bob and you know and, and also you know framing came involved so you like psychologically you're you're part of that but they took the footage we color uh, Yvonne color timed it it was sent out. It was um, it was optically printed, and you know, it basically, uh, not optically printed. Sorry, it went I P I N uh -huh. twice, I do believe, and so it was like really supposed to look gnarlyed up, uh -huh. and which which brought to like since we're all friends here, you know, it brought up some really interesting things because like the op the optical the I N I P I N and then the scanning actually changed the framing slightly, so we had to like compensate for that because you were getting like sprocket holes almost at certain points so you had to like oh gosh we can't have that and so you know reframing on, on the on the back end but there there was that there was um you know uh, uh the black and white stuff was shot on black and white stock um and and but the real eye-opening moment was okay we're, we're setting the look for this this show the look is not a look that we're setting in the DI theater, which is what happens in every other show. You're like, we have what I call a look setting session, and with the DP and the colorist, and you create like this is what the movie is going to look like. The movie is supposed to look like original negative struck on print, and that was the moment that that really opened my eyes. Where like it was the it was day one. Wait. We'll come, we'll come to that. This is very interesting. This is very, so wait. So let's, let's start something in a first. So, so they shot it on film, but you told me as well that they were viewing dailies from 35 millimeter projector. Yeah, yeah so. Are you, are you kidding me? No, no, that was, and that was the hero. That's like, it, it, you, they, they would shoot 35 millimeter and it would go through Photocam. They would make a print out of it. That's what Quentin would watch <laughs> and projected, and, and he would take that print and go to his place, and they were cutting. On the print. negative. They, were, they had like old school movieolas no, going on, no. and they were cutting print together, and they were assembling the movie old school. So like the concept non-linear editing, <laughs> that's not used on this movie at all. And and, and 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 are so you kidding me? They really were cutting on moviolas. There was a moviola. I, I, all right, I will say this. I went into the office where they were going there, and there were two editorial setups where they had the old school spindlies going on, and there were two editors with white gloves sitting there cutting print. Oh and, my god! You know the uh. whole like tape splicer. I uh, uh, hadn't uh, seen it since 92. <laughs> you know? And there was actually, thank you for reminding me, there was actually in the beginning of the, of the show, there was a scramble to find tape splicing, or, you know, splicing tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They, you know, like, they and they found this secret stash of, like, somebody had, like, forgotten to throw it away <laughs> like, in, in, in some place, and they were like, oh, we found a couple rolls of it, and we're so excited. And... Uh, and that's that because that's I mean I like mean, it's crazy. Tarantino wants to make movies as if they were made 20 years ago, or at least he did with this one. It was like, this was. This is this is what it is. It reminds me of a story that like there was this. Yeah, this was before this movie where like Bob had uh, on a previous movie had approached uh, Quentin. I got this secondhand. Don't quote me on this, but he goes. Uh, Bob is saying to Quentin like. Hey, have you have you you should check out this new digital camera that's coming out. It's pretty good. I like this. I've used this on a couple shows. But what what if we check this out? And Quentin's response was, "That's great. Now I'd like to start talking about my film." 
<laughs> and and you know that pretty much sums it that up. That was the end of the conversation. Yeah, totally. <laughs> that was the end of it. Okay, now the train left and he didn't get onto this train, so he's never gonna. He's never. He did. I mean, like, yeah. but at the same time, I gotta tell you guys. I gotta tell ya. <laughs> They're like that first couple of days. Like, I got to go to dailies and see, like, the negative struck off print, and I've been. I haven't looked at true print like that in years. I mean, looking at digital, and like, I had this moment where it's it. Like the scene I saw was part of the it's it's the western that they shoot the cowboy you know like uh, where yeah, Lino yeah, 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 yeah. messes up and 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 uh, Oliphant I think is his name has like a red shirt and I sat down and I was like oh, okay I'm gonna look at film and I literally did this <gasps> like it was like oh my god like it was it was. <laughs> lack of a better phrase, look, like looking into the eyes of God. It was like the colors were just like bam, boom. And it was so vibrant yeah. and so alive, but like skin tones were natural. And one of the things- But wait, this is, this is the Prince truck straight this is the print, from This the is the Prince truck. And you know, of yeah. course I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. There's so much like definition going on in the skin. All the tonal shades are going on here. And you know, like, and like, you know, highlights are yellow and like the beard is green and it just all goes down. And you're like, you're like, oh, it's so beautiful, and I have to recreate this digitally now, and and uh, and you know, so like, you know, we we started with we, so ev what happened was I understood, and we we had this established kind of starting point LUT. This LUT, um, we didn't set the look for the movie until the first two weeks of the movie was done, so like it like the first like. 10 working days they would just iteration 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 and how it would but work wait 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 can i just interrupt you there so so wait what happened then so so what were you setting on scans yeah so you would scan the negative what was happening tell me what was the photochem would get the 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 shoot from the day before okay they would process it okay they would print it okay they would look at it okay and then if it was approved and all that they would scan it uh, which what scanner? Scan the, uh, they would scan the, oh, that's a really good point. They, they would scan the negative and we went through, um, we went through testing up front and I, the, uh, just the smartest decision I think was ever made where there's this whole thing of when you're dealing with film, um, dailies turnaround, right? Mm -hmm. Um, airy scanners were slow. You're not going to get dailies in a good time frame. And that became a, a problem. What I didn't, what we, what I really wanted to try to avoid was a scan twice scenario. Yeah. Because you, you fall in love with what you're seeing and you scan again and it never looks the same. Yeah. Especially a lot of times like these, the first time scan is, is a, is a telecine-esque yeah, type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Photochem had a scanity. Scanity. Yeah. And we had them scan um, airy and scanity, same pieces of, of footage. Uh -huh. And and to Photochem's credit, they came over and we looked at it and we saw that all these these differences because airy and also at the same time there was like this pressure because like airy had just announced they were getting a new scanner, and Bob's like get, we should get that scanner and I I'm calling Photochem I'm like you guys gonna get this scanner and they're like I don't think we're gonna get this scanner. <laughs> and, and, uh, so right. so um, the. Uh, the, we, we were looking at the uh, the area versus the the scanning scanner, and the big deal was that this thing could basically do real time scanning, scanning you know, close to real time scanning. At 4K. At 4K, and and they didn't quite match, and that was a big deal. And they went back and they said, "We will get this to match," and they got it. And we they redid the test and we reviewed it again, and Bob accepted the match. We, the match. So we were able to say. That's awesome because now dailies are 4K scans, true scan, true actual scans so that are using dailies, yeah. and <laughs> we are never going to scan again. Scan once, done. Whoa! 
<laughs> and, and okay, that, but that is very 2019. Oh, totally. 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 You know, this I mean, that's is what like I'm saying. There's this hybrid thing yeah, that you have yeah, to like yeah, embrace. Yeah, yeah, where yeah. like, you know, I'm trying to get this thing where like the last thing I want to do to Bob is like <laughs> set up like you've got some amazing dailies and your DI doesn't look exactly like <laughs> the dailies. And yeah, then yeah, basically yeah. he's just punching me in the face. That is very much. And I mean, the amount of data and the amount of scanning and the speed of scanning. Totally, you know, totally. Yeah. So like, you know, that was going on and. Um, and and so we that scanning would happen and uh, dailies would happen. LED was part of the dailies process and all of that. And and what would happen is Yvonne would go out and look at the printed, you know, uh, print from negative. Mm -hmm. And he would come and he'd have this mental thing in his mind of what he saw. Mm -hmm. And he would go out there every day and he'd come back and then he'd look at the this. He we'd have the scanned footage ready for him mm -hmm. the moment he walked in the door and we'd sit down we'd watch the scanned footage with the show lut as it stood at that moment and wait that show lut you built prior or 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 like or you were building as you were we shooting. were building as we were so going that's the show lut that's the show lut like the the out ot if you uh -huh, will the output uh -huh. transform mm -hmm. um we were building it as we were going because he would come back and go the reds aren't right the skin tone here isn't good i'm not seeing the definition in the face that i saw here that you know it's too uh you know there's not enough color in the shadows and um as so what do you do Matt? so as a color scientist so what do you do, do, I, do? <laughs> what do, I, do? Uh, I mean you go like my god what am i well, gonna do what i did is i i, I kind of broke my own rules to be very honest whereas like you know as, as from my it's it's I, I said to myself, okay, to break the rules, you need to know the rules. I know the rules. I know how to push this thing to the limit so that it doesn't break and and just ride that razor's edge. And so the show LUT of this show is not exactly the smoothest curve in the entire world. Wow. It's got it's got some waves going on inside of it. And it was, uh, there was this critical moment, I gotta tell you, man, there was this critical moment where I was, I was building these iterations. Like the last, the one we ended up using had a designation of something like V8 Foxtrot V3. You know, it had gone through <laughs> something like 28 iterations. And, um, and there was this, like I put this in front of, I was, putting these things in front of Yvonne saying, how about this, how about this? Is this what you saw, is this what you saw? And there was one where he goes, stop. And, and I took that as negative. And I was like, damn it, I suck. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, no, this is really good. And I was like, I was like, wait, stop, say that again. He's like, no, 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 look, look at the skin, this is what I, this is what I see, this is what I see. And I'm like, oh, have we found it? Have we, yeah, have we broken the code, if you will? And, and really, and that's where it's this concept of like, you know, film isn't perfect. And in this digital age where we're, we're conditioned to find those mathematical perfections. And I just said, I'm going to, I'm going to allow myself to be imperfect mm. on this. And, and it rides the range, it rides the edge. Wait, wait, wait. So of, Matt, of can I ask shadows. you something? So I think those curves you had to create in order to reproduce the look, do you think they are really in the film or they're a result of the scanning process? Where, where where does the imperfection come? No, because it's it's part of the film because the I I know it's part of the film because the, our reference was had no scanner in the process. Oh. it was it was film printed to print. So those curves that we've been given by marketing materials from Kodak and stuff like this that look like so perfect, they're not really the most accurate curves. Then is it? Uh, all I can say is for this movie through this process shot by this DP under this lighting condition that's through this that's one That's political. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I, you can't make a blanket statement. And because, because actually, I, I, I really love what we built. Uh -huh. And the problem, uh, and it, it is a, it's kind of a, I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to apply it in other means, and it doesn't work. Mm. It's, it works under this scenario only. That's what I found so far, and I'm I'm working on the concept of like now I learned a lot in the process, and I, I I'm building it in other things. But this whole like there's there's this 
this general idea of like, um, oh, you got the LUT that was used on this movie. I'll use it on my movie and it'll look like that movie. <laughs> yeah. and, it, and, and it doesn't work at all on this. Like, it's almost like on this one, like I could throw it out in the universe and do like, do whatever you want. You're gonna apply it to something, you're like, this doesn't look like uh, Hollywood at all. But it's, it's yes. it is, you know, but that's actually, that is yeah, something yeah. to very much mention about, you know, colors and color scientists interaction. You know, I, I built this look, but don't think for one moment that I'm, I'm the reason completely that, yeah. you know, once upon a time Hollywood looks like it does. It's, you know, I, I, I can give the tools in the starting block, but it's, it's Yvonne and Elodie and Bob that bring it home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's, know, it's, a, it's a team effort, but you know, you're the, the, you're the connection, you're the enabler, right? You know, you, you know. <laughs> enabler is a good word. Yeah, <laughs> it is, you know. It's, you know Dealer you, would be a good yeah, word. Yeah. First one's free. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but you know, look, you know, it, it is it is it is a very important part. And you know, actually, you know, probably outside of this room doesn't even get mentioned, right? People don't even know this exists. And general audience wouldn't even know that there was someone like you actually really figuring, you know, curves to make it actually really work for everybody else. And this is like in a very you know, to me, like you know, I, I it's it's actually mind boggling. How come, you know, we're we're still like, you know, hiding people who actually do this protest in the back room and not even talk about it? It. So hopefully, like you know, we'll 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 hopefully you know get some of that recognition now. So can I just interrupt a little bit and can we give Matt a big round of applause? <laughs> exactly, exactly for breaking the rules and you know doing a home run and getting these things done. Because Matt, you know, your contribution is is part of it, but it did look. Absolutely amazing. That, that means a lot. I you appreciate know, it. My it mom did, would be very happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, very good. Okay, so wait. So then they cut the movie. Then they brought the negatives. You know, they didn't scan it twice. Nope. Once. Once. Just once. So you had in your on your scan on your sand or something all of the material. All of it. And 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 this is a big deal because like dailies were not just the classic CDL ASC CDL. Dailies were DI. Wow. Like it was like it was full tilt boogie. Try to get the dailies to look as close to the DI as we possibly could within you know the realm of where we so, were. So that story we read in the papers that that Tarantino didn't allow uh, power windows. It's not true. No, actually, that's absolutely true. No, come on. No, it you is. must have. No, no, no. You must have. No. Uh, there was too many shots on steady cam. It doesn't work. You must have. It, during the dailies process, if we, if someone called out that they wanted a window, it became almost a bureaucratic meeting, no. where <laughs> where where people had to be notified and told. And it had to be approved if it occurred, because God forbid you put a window in there and don't tell anyone, and then if someone finds out about it later, maybe it goes through a VFX or something like that, you're done. You're done. And and windows. Yeah, no, because like the whole the whole point was that this should look like the 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 print. So, like our rules, where you could do what print, do, what you can do in print. So we we could do dynamics because you can ah. adjust, you could adjust that. But did we very very gently? You know, like that was only under very strict circumstances. Um, the real goal was to make it look like the print. Now, that being said, you know, you're adjusting your curves. You're doing hue shifts. You're doing secondary. You know. Primary, secondaries, you're going to town, but you're not keying and you're not doing windows. And man, those two rules, there were definitely moments of stress on my part, where it's like, because it was, it was a show where the communication was so, it, it, the communication was so strong. Like it was not a show where people are like, oh, just go make a movie and let us know when you're ready for us to come in and we'll like do the DI. It was like every step of the way had to be just known to the point to the point where like the framing we created a document with the post the, the post supervisor that was framing from dailies and DI because uh, and all the way through DI so that pixel for pixel we would get a match all the way through and it was like uh, we, it was like a seven-page PDF. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> crazy. 
Okay, and then cut. You brought all of that in. Base light, isn't it? What was it? Yeah. And then Base light. And then grade it on digital projector. Yes. 4K. For you're talking the DI time. DI time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 4K. 4K. And um, was this all attended, the DI, or was it just visited by you know Quentin and Bob at part of time? Bob. So Bob was all. You know, Bob was there. All you the know, time. Now, now the way Yvonne uh, likes to work is, and I, you know, and LED and all of us, I, I agree with this completely. Is Bob and Yvonne know each other? The 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 what they wanted w had been established kind of early on, and they've got a shorthand. Mm -hmm. They know how to talk to one another, and uh, you know, and and Yvonne was uh, supervising the dailies, so you know, it was it, we were on track, so. The goal is to create imagery so that when the client walks in, we're already way more than halfway there. Mm -hmm. It's not a like, let's sit down and start from scratch. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, no, we, we understand where you want to go. Now sit down. Now let's salt a taste. Mm -hmm. Let's, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. Instead of like this massive start over thing. That, that wasn't the case here at all. So, you know, Bob, of course, was massively involved. But... Yvonne and Elodie and others would, would, you could say, prep it based mm -hmm. on what we knew Bob wanted, mm -hmm. what they knew Bob wanted. And it, then he would come in and approve or disapprove and, and change things. And, and, and Tarantino did come in uh, a number of times, but he wasn't in daily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, and what about texture? What about grain? Did you manage any of that? Well, um, it was all based on film, so we didn't have to. So you didn't. You, there was no shots that were a little bit under, and they were a little noisy, and you kind of said mm, maybe we should kind of clean. No. Only uh, there was um, maybe like a, a a couple instances in so, some of the movies within movies uh -huh. of like let's add some more ah, to, to more. like separate the other way it from around, everything right? else. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So, but it wasn't a scenario where like we it w you know we didn't add grain or uh, it's not that classic like we. We shot on film, so let's remove the grain and then manipulate it and put it back on or anything like. No, it's, it was the grain was there, and that was, that it, was it. The way that it was, was shot, it. yeah, yeah, that was in creative intent. Okay, and then the eye. How long did it take, roughly? What do you think? Years. <laughs> so I mean, like, you know, it was, I mean, uh, two months. Yeah. Two months. Two months. That's max. okay. That's yeah, I mean, good. and that includes like. You know, there's there's the the standard DI. There we did a we did a, a Dolby Vine. Um, oh my God! No, uh, there is a what? There is a Dolby version. Oh yeah, it's sweet. Really? It looks so good. It looks so well, where good. can we see that? Do you know they're showing it somewhere? Uh, I have no idea now if it, w I, it was shooting. Oh my God! Yeah. That, and that there, and of course there was the film print, which I think you could probably still see it. You know, uh, yeah, Tarantino's yeah, yeah. theater. Tarantino's theater, theater yeah. yeah. That looked actually good. Yeah. Okay, so so basically, and then okay, so then you created like a 4K masters, and then mm -hmm. you just struck DCPs, and then Photochem did the final 35 prints for the for the release. Correct. The you release. know, I in this day and age, and uh, you know, Josh can can talk, I'm sure, about this as well. But like, you know, uh, at Harbor, we don't have film recorders, so it's it's. And when I was at eFilm, very much part of my job was was um, uh, mapping the film recorders to the film so that imagery could be placed upon and uh, you know l go out to film and it lo it looks like what it should look like. Mm -hmm. um, it's unreasonable for me to, or it's it's I'll even say it's egotistical mm -hmm. for me to go into a place like Photochem and say, I I want to. Uh, profile your recorders, you know, the, no one will know their recorders better than they, they will. <laughs> so it is this concept of if we provide a known color space, they they can map from that known color space to their recorder space and apply that to print, and that should look as best it can mm -hmm. um, film. And they were pretty darn successful. And I there think. were like some sessions where the Tarantino was approving prints. Oh, I'd absolutely. Yeah, oh, like absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. A couple of iterations, but you know. And then it happened at the end. Amazing. Amazing. Guys, can we all thank one more time Matt for, you know, <laughs> spilling out the beans and letting us know.